All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. We're approaching the business end of the season now. I think we're about 12 rounds in to this shortened 17 round COVID-19 season, which means we are just about at the tail end. We've got most teams hubbing in Queensland as of next week. Obviously, the Eagles and Dockers still have another game in Perth. Uh, and then after that, you're going to have 15 out of the 18 teams in Queensland for what will probably be the rest of the season. Now, obviously, we don't quite know what the finals makeup's going to look like in terms of where they're going to be. I presume we're going to go for the standard eight uh, team final series. I don't see there's any reason to change that. But whether or not there's going to be home finals this year is a massive headache that the AFL needs to resolve pretty quickly. The issues you foresee with it at the moment, obviously, no Victorian teams can realistically host finals. So what you're going to have, unfortunately, is you might have some teams who can play home finals, someone like a Port Adelaide who could fly in week in, week out. And obviously, Brisbane and Gold Coast, should they make it, which I don't expect they will, uh, they can play home finals, but obviously, Victorian sides can't. And uh, it looks like probably if the Eagles make it, which they probably should, they realistically can't fly into Perth and back to Queensland for home and away finals. So it's going to get really messy. There's going to be a serious issue around fairness as far as I'm concerned, particularly if Brisbane or Port are able to play home finals and other teams cannot. And this is obviously really important to work out because home finals or away finals will be huge in establishing which teams can win the flag and which can't. I think we can safely assume Victoria hosting games is completely out of the picture for this final series, including the grand final. I doubt WA is going to allow teams to fly in and out for finals. So you're really looking at only Brisbane and Port Adelaide that can potentially host finals. And as far as I'm concerned, it's unacceptable to go into a final series with this the case. So what does that mean? It means we're likely going to have a final series entirely localized in Queensland, in my opinion, or at least that's the most fair result. Now, obviously, in that scenario, Brisbane still will get home games, but as far as I'm concerned, they should be playing all their finals away at Metricon, just so it's fair, so nobody is getting a home ground advantage. And then the reward for obviously finishing top four is, well, it's the same between finishing first, second, third, and fourth, but at least you get that double chance. Now, there's been a bit of a debate around the whole asterisk conversation. Is this premiership going to count as much as other premierships? Is it unfair on certain teams? Look, the Victorian teams have had to deal with a lot more than any other team. Even the Eagles have had their fair bit of hubbing to do, but they've got it pretty good compared to what most teams out of Victoria have had to put up with this year. And equally, I don't think it would be fair if we had an entire final series located in Perth. That would give the Eagles a ridiculous advantage. If we do go into a final series with one team playing entirely at home, then as far as I'm concerned, that brings up the asterisk for me. But I won't ramble on too much. The point of this video is to rank which teams I think can actually win the premiership. But of course, I'm going to do it under the assumption that every game in the finals is going to be neutral. Now, it may be end up that the Gabba host the grand final and Brisbane host the grand final. So be it. I can't really plan around that too much. Or if they happen to do it in Perth, the Eagles will host it. But at the moment, I'm just going to rank based on the fact that it's going to be neutral games, which teams I think can win the flag. So as the title suggests, I think there are five main contenders this year, and I'm going to start at the top. Let's look at Richmond, the current reigning premiers. Now, obviously, as I said, they've won two out of the last three flags, and the in between that, they were minor premiers. So they've been the strongest team in the comp over that period of time, comfortably, as far as I'm concerned. They started well in round one to beat Carlton, but then they had a really poor restart to the season. But like I've made the point before, in their flag years, they really were slow start to start the season in those seasons as well. So that's kind of almost an ominous sign. They're really good at timing their run for finals. And that's exactly what I expect them to do again this year. They're a good Queensland team from what I can see. They've had some pretty good results in the hub. In fact, they've had commanding wins over North Melbourne, the Dogs, and even the Lions at Metricon Stadium. That, for me, was probably the biggest statement they've made. They've had... Moments this year where they've had, you know, outs with personnel. They're not the only team, of course. They're hubbing and they're still putting themselves in the conversation. I think they currently sit sixth on the ladder, but the ladder's kind of jumbled at the moment with uneven amounts of games. They're good in Queensland conditions. Their finals harden. And that, for me, I still think they're probably the most likely team to win the flag. And I think another danger stat for them is that they've won, is it 15 in a row against the Lions? who are probably their next best challenger. So yeah, as far as I'm concerned, Richmond are the team best poised to win the flag and go back to back in 2020. Now flowing on from that, I reckon the Brisbane Lions are the next best team 
likely to win the flag. And the only reason I don't have them first is just because of their poor record against the Tigers in particular. And I know they had a bad final series last year. I'm not necessarily reading into that too much, but it's hard to imagine them really lifting to the required level to beat the Tigers in a final. Maybe I'm wrong, but for me, they're just second in the pegging. Now, they generally haven't done too much wrong this year after, of course, finishing top two last year, which was a massive surprise. I think they were like 12th or 13th the previous season. They finished top two and just ran out of steam at the end of the season. Couldn't get over the line in finals against the Tigers, which is quite telling, at the Gabba. And, of course, losing at home as well to the Giants. This year, their two strongest performances have been against fellow contenders, the Eagles in round three, I think it was, and then to also beat Port by about six goals when Port have been playing some really good footy and otherwise undefeated uh, in Queensland. Actually, I think Geelong just beat them. So other than that, you know, Port's playing some great footy, only lost a few games this year. Uh, those two performances are the strongest that they've put out so far. On the flip side of that, their two other performances against the big contenders like Geelong and Richmond haven't ended well. They got done by the Cats in Sydney, and as I alluded to before, the Tigers absolutely smashed them in their own state, albeit not at their home ground. Now, this isn't really a veiled criticism at Brisbane because it's just a product of the season that we live in, but there's no doubt they have a little bit of a benefit having played this whole season in their home state and it's not their fault and I'm not saying they don't deserve to be top two because they certainly do but my point is you know going into finals with you know maybe some bodies that have you know less of a burden on them having not traveled at all this year and they're you know the furthest trip they've really made is Sydney other than that is Metricon Stadium generally speaking I think that puts them in a good spot with their I guess their fitness and their their player management, and on top of that, they're really good in that department anyway. Last year had a magic injury run. They've more or less backed that up this year with a clean bill of health, and I think that's really important going into finals. They've got a good blend of youth and experience, so in that respect, pretty well poised for a finals assault. They've obviously got a fairly star-studded young list. They've thankfully got the all-clear with Charlie Cameron not having structural damage done to his knee. That would have been a huge blow going into finals. Lockie Neal's in Brownlow form, and on top of that, you got, got guys like Zorko and McCluggage really supporting him, and the the support is really coming from the youth as well. Alex Witherden's found his way back into the side and playing good football. So thankfully, plenty of good players to choose from at Brisbane. As far as I'm concerned, they're the number two seed at this stage. Next up, I have got the Geelong Cats in third, although to be honest, you can make a case for them being first as well. And they're a side that gets routinely overlooked. I'm not too sure why. Perhaps because they're old and, you know, of course, Tim Kelly leaving the club would have been a blow. But as far as I'm concerned, with their seasoned and mature list, they're as good as chance as anyone to win the flag this year. Now, let's not forget last year, they were the minor premiers and the best team for the majority of that season. They carried that solid form into finals as well, although they got done by the Pies in week one. They nearly knocked off Richmond in a prelim in what was more or less the real grand final that year. As far as I'm concerned, those two, Richmond and Geelong, were the best two teams last year, and it's starting to look like a possibility again this year. They're in ominous form at the moment. They've just belted Port, who are on top of the ladder, and at previously 9-2 and 143%. I will touch on them a little bit later, but to smash them in the way they did really was a big statement. Tom Hawkins is one of the form players of the competition, not just forwards. He bags six. He's winning the Coleman. I think he's up there for assists as well in really career best form. And, you know, they're doing all this without Ablett in their side as well, who's obviously out with personal reasons, may or may not come back. But either way, the list is strong regardless. They also had a big win over the Saints, who were in some good form at the time. They've also beaten Brisbane as well this year. And they're doing all this playing pretty much entirely away from home, another Victorian side in the hub that is playing some top-notch footy. And the thing I really respect about Geelong is their ability to play anyone, anywhere, at any time. They had a really good performance against the Eagles in Perth, unlucky to not be able to run out the entire game. They're also coming against a side that has played a few games at home and are really good at home. So as far as I'm concerned, that was a really, really impressive performance by Geelong. The only slip up this year really was Carlton at GMHBA Stadium. Although, you know, every team, even premiership teams will have slip ups throughout the year. As far as I'm concerned, you can make as strong a case for Geelong winning the flag as any other team. If you look at their, we know about their midfield, but if you look at their forward line as well at the moment with Hawkins, Rowan, 
Danger and Mitch Duncan, just those four, and you got Dow House and Grian Myers. On top of that, makes them a very dangerous proposition. Underrate them at your peril. I think Geelong are a serious contender for 2020. The fourth best favorite are my boys, the West Coast Eagles. Now, of course, the Eagles won the premiership in 2018, but couldn't quite replicate that form in 2019. Okay, so they went 15 and seven, but really dropped off towards the end of the year with a disappointing home loss in the final round, which cost them a top four berth. And as far as I'm concerned, as soon as that happened, they were not a premiership shot. That being said, you look at their list profile and there's so many good players in their prime. And of course they added to that with Tim Kelly, one of the star mids of the competition. So it's very easy to make the compelling case that the Eagles should be up there with the best teams this year. If you look at the premiership betting right now, the Eagles are the flag favorites. And I gotta say, this is something I actually don't agree with. This season's definitely been a little bit rocky. Obviously, we had a good win in round one against the Ds, and then a horror hub experience where we lost to the Gold Coast, Brisbane, and then got annihilated by Port in three consecutive weeks. I think we've won six or seven, I think it's seven straight since then. But to be fair, we have had a lot of things on our terms, having played Adelaide and Sydney, and then a long stretch at home, which has included some really good performances, a good home win against Collingwood, although they're out of form, the, probably the best of which was beating Geelong in Perth. And uh, I guess overcoming Carlton as well, who brought a really good intensity to that game, but just couldn't run out the game. Look, you can make the case that Eagles are playing the best football and are probably the red hot team of the comp right now. But let's not overlook the fact that they've played an extended period of football at home. They've had a rest. They've had a buy in there as well. Good injury run at the moment. I don't want to play them down too much, but you compare them to, you know, what teams like Collingwood are doing right now, and it's easy to see why the Eagles are playing the football that they are. What they have going for them is a fit Josh Kennedy. First time he's been fit in about three years, and you can really, really see that. People wanted to write him off going into this year, but he is proving them all wrong, and I think he's second in the common with a game in hand. But perhaps more importantly, you've got Nick Natanui in the form of his life, really giving those mids first use. And in terms of the midfielders, it's just been a revolving door of contributing mids as we added Tim Kelly. No one's really smashing it at the moment, but there's generally always one guy on his day having a great game, and that's been just enough for the Eagles to get by. Look, in a normal season, I would say the Eagles are as good a chance as any, but you look and they've got to play their last five games in 19 days in Queensland. I don't trust their ability to play in those conditions, and with that adversity, I can just see it going a bit rough, especially when it backs onto a final series that's likely to be in Queensland as well. So we're not talking about just five rounds. We're talking about eight or nine weeks in the hub. I can't imagine the Eagles doing that from there. I don't really have the same faith in the Eagles to win the flag in those circumstances as I do a Richmond or Geelong in particular at the moment. I'm hoping they'll prove me wrong, but as far as I'm concerned, the Eagles are slightly behind the top three that I mentioned. Finally, we'll go into a team that I've talked a little bit about lately on the channel. And in fact, they've done a video with Anthony the Pair just a few videos ago, so go check that out. We know Port Adelaide's story, they're top of the ladder at the moment, nine and three with 127%. The last couple of years, they've missed finals after coming fifth in 2017 and being knocked out by Luke Shuey. You can definitely make the case that Port Adelaide have underachieved in the last couple of years. We saw them lose Wingard and Polek, and at the time, Port Adelaide desperately needed outside run. So I remember thinking, gee, this could get really ugly for the power, but, but it's not very often a team completely rejuvenates its best 22 simply through the draft. They've drafted some really good kids. We, you know about Connor Rosie, Xavier Dersma, Zach Butters, and then you know Mitch Georgiatis, Todd Marshall as well, not long before that. That's really added a quick and you know, dynamic edge to that team. And we're seeing Port play some really, really good footy. Maybe their best 22 isn't quite as star-studded as some of those other top-line teams. You're looking at their best players this year, probably Charlie Dixon, uh, Travis Boak, and maybe Tom Jonas as well after that, who are all having great seasons. But none of those players, maybe with the exception of Boak, were considered a genuine A-graders going into this season. The other thing that makes me question Port Adelaide a little bit is historically they really run out the back end of seasons quite poorly. So in 2018, they lost their last seven and I think what were they 11 and four and missed the finals and then they lost five out of the last seven to end 19 doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to do the same this year but you look at that and you just think I don't quite have the same faith in Port Adelaide as I do a Richmond come finals now I know I talked them up a week ago on this channel and you know I'm still sticking by that and by saying the Port Adelaide is still a premiership contender but you know looking at their performance against Geelong albeit maybe it was a one-off every team's allowed a down day and will again be like the other teams have to play the whole series in Queensland. I just think 
I have less faith in them than some of those other teams, and they sit just behind those contenders for me. I do know Port Adelaide do go well in Queensland, so maybe that wasn't the best point to make. And the fact that they've beat Richmond, you give them a sneaky chance, but I think it's just the lack of experience that has them just behind the other contenders for me. Now, there you go, guys. Those are the five teams I genuinely think can win the Premiership. Your next cabs off the ranker look St. Kilda, but I just don't have the same faith with them on the big stage in a final. They're a young side, in fact, one of the youngest in the league, and you know some of their performances against the big contenders this year have left a little bit wanting. You look at Collingwood, whose season is falling apart, GWS, who look really meek, and Melbourne, who are playing some hot footy, but have left their run pretty late, not sure I can really back those teams in to the same extent, but I would love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have I left someone out? Have I been too generous? It would be great to hear your opinion on which teams can win the 2020 AFL flag. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Go to manscaped.com and use the code TRUEFOOTY, all caps, all one word, if you want 20% off their products, plus free shipping. Go check out Coal World. We've just recorded podcast three. Really appreciate your support on all that so far. And yeah, bring on the rest of the season. Go Eagles.